Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you part four of the Eldritch Omens painting series. We've already managed to get the Autoc, the Ranger and the new uh, Rangers on Jet Bike miniatures painted up and on videos. They were posted up last week. This week it's time to move over to the Chaos side of things and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to paint up the beautiful new Chaos Space Marine Warpsmith in Night Lord's colour schemes. I'm super excited for this one guys so stick around and enjoy the video. Okay guys, the prep work for this miniature was very similar to, in fact exactly the same as my How to Paint Black Templars video. So you start with an all over Chaos Black Spray and then you do a Zenithal of Lead Belcher. Quite a solid coat of Zenithal. Um, you want to get most of the miniature to be silver. We then move over to Leviathan Blue Contrast. It's a really dark, rich blue contrast paint and it's going to be the perfect base coat for the armour to get the Night Lord's Midnight Clad colour scheme in place. So just take your time, go around all of the armor panels on your Chaos Miniatures if you're painting Night Lords, the Viadon Blue, and hit all those panels. This particular miniature is a Warpsmith, so he has a lot of bits that want to remain silver. So as you can see here, all of the panels are now Leviathan blued up, but you can see how much silver is actually still left on the miniature, all of his um, mechandrites and stuff like that. From here, what we do is we want to move over and start getting some color onto all of that trim, and there's a lot of trim on Chaos Miniatures. So, Retributor Armor Gold, a fine brush, and a little bit of patience, and we want to go and do is follow all of the armor seams around, finding every single one of those bits of trim, and just get a nice, solid base coat of Retributor Armor. This was by far the most tedious stage of the paint job, but getting it done correctly will make all the difference between a nice job and an average job. Also, when you think you have finished doing all of the trim, it's always worth going back, having another look at the miniature um, and seeing if you've missed any spots. I personally missed a piece of trim on this miniature. Once you have all the trim done, it should look something like this. That already transforms the look of the miniature. It's already starting to look a little bit more neat and tidy, a little bit more like a, like a base coated model. We have Blood Angel's Red Contrast, and this is just simply for the wraps on his big power axe or power hammer, depending on which variant of the miniature you built. So yeah, Blood Angel's Red Contrast on any of those leather wraps. I so made a quick mistake there, but quick wipe of the thumb and it comes straight off. It's one of the benefits of using contrast paints because they're so liquidy. Um, you can clean them up really quickly if you make a mistake. Here's the model with all of the red done on his uh, weapon. We're going to move over to Rhinox Hide now and we're going to base coat the straps on the miniature. So the only real strap he has is his big holster. Um, so I'm going to give that a base coat of Rhinox Hide. I actually missed the strap um, going down the front of his like chainmail skirt thing um, that holds his little chaos symbol in place. I missed that when base coating the Rhinox Hide. As you can see there, that strap is still silver. But it's okay, it's such a small detail that when I went to the layering stage later on, I covered it up with the Rhinox Hide and it, it looked perfect. So with that done, that is actually all the base coats I'm going to apply before we move over to the shading stage. So the shade that I've chosen is Colia Green Shade. This may surprise some of you, but hopefully you've watched a couple of my videos now and my mental shade tactics um, have paid off in other videos and you will trust me here. So Leviathan Blue, sorry, not Leviathan Blue, Colia Green Shade uh, shade all over the miniature. Every single part of the miniature needs to get this shade applied. Once it's all applied, it should look something like this. So while that shade is drying on this miniature, I'm going to get the miniature based up. And I'm also going to take this time to chat to you guys a little bit. Okay guys, while that shade is drying, I thought I'd take this opportunity to chat to you a little bit. So first of all, I just want to say a huge thank you to all you guys who've supported me so far on the 365 Project. For anyone who doesn't know what the 365 Project is, it is me, Andy, with the brand Mediocre Hobbies going full time into social media and YouTube across this year. All I can say is we're about two weeks into the project. Um, and our subscriber count has gone from the low 3,000s to mid 7,000 in two weeks. 
That is not possible without you guys. I just want to say a huge thank you for that. Um, if you guys haven't already joined the 365 Project, it's very simple. Just subscribe to the channel, like the videos that come out and give them a watch. That will help me out immensely. If you see real value in what I do and you learn something from it and you want to support me even more, there's links below to my uh, Patreon. Um, you can get involved that way. I would love to have you as a newest member of the community. And yeah, I just honestly can't thank you guys enough. So keep it up, keep watching, keep liking, commenting and subscribing. And let's get back to the video. Like I said, while I was waiting for that shade to dry, I did in fact move over and get the miniature based. I've used a kind of rubble urban texture. If you want to know how I base this miniature, there's a link to a YouTube short that should appear on the top of the screen now. That will bring you to a how-to video on if you want to replicate these bases. Okay, time to bring up that dark armor a little more. And we're of course going to use Night Lord's Blue for Night Lord's Armor. And all I'm going to do is give one or two nice thin coats of Night Lord's Blue across the armor. Uh, one coat in some areas, two coats in another. I genuinely find the bits that are going to be kind of facing upwards more, the top of his helmet, pauldrons, even those big leg greave pieces. And we'll get two coats because people's eyes will be drawn to them and they'll be looking for you know, mistakes or brush strokes or anything like that. Anything where that silver is going to show through. So take your time, all the armor panels, and give them a nice tidy layering drop of Night Lord's Blue. It's also important at this stage not to hit any of the other parts of the miniature, the gold, um, or any of the silver, because this is a layering stage. This is where we're going to make the miniature nice, neat, and tidy, and finish off the paint job. And we don't have to keep going back and forth trying to repair um, any accidents, which you can do. It's not a, such a big deal, but yeah, the slower you go and the more time you take, uh, the less work you'll have to fix later on, which will actually make the, the painting process quicker. Just gonna go in and do a little bit on the chest. You can see this miniature is obviously not like most other Chaos miniatures. It's quite a difficult miniature to paint in that. There's a lot of parts in the way, um, or at least it, to me, it seemed like it was going to be a lot more difficult to paint, and it actually wasn't. So looks can be deceiving even for me. And I'm actually quite pleased with how he turned out. This is my second time attempting to paint Night Lord's miniatures, and the first time ended in disaster. So I'm super pleased that I have a scheme now that I'm happy with, and that I will continue with and have an army painted up. So this is with all of the Night Lord's blue applied. Next we're going to move over to Lead Belcher. And this is actually going to be used to layer up all of the metallic parts. All of them, I mean the gold and the silver. We're going to shift the bright gold over to a more kind of cold brassy colour which will suit the Night Lord's blue armor a lot more. And this requires just a little bit of sketching on the gold. Um, basically, you're just going to layer up the gold with the lead belcher, not covering up all of the gold, just a lot of the high points and a lot of the flat surfaces. A few quick dabs. As you can see how I did that technique there. I'll show you a little close-up now, which will show you the difference um, between that and the surrounding gold. So there you go. So there's all the other flat gold, and there's the highlighted with lead belcher one. This is all of the gold layered up across the miniature. And silver, apologies. Quite pleased with how the axe head is turning out. So we're going to move back onto that Rhinox hide. Like I said before, this is just to layer up the holster. And at this point, I will then tidy up that strap that I missed because it's such a small detail doesn't need to be base coated and shaded and layered one flat of where uh, one flat coat of Rhinox hide across this trap and um, we'll do a nice job nobody should notice and then of course we're going to go in and get a little bit of Rhinox hide back on that holster which is obviously empty because he's holding his pistol in his hand so we don't have to worry about hitting any handles of pistols or anything like that Quick and easy job. Okay, I think it's time for the iconic Night Lord's Lightning to be painted. Unfortunately, I forgot to show the pot of paint I'm using here. It is Ulfwan Grey, is the first color that I will use. This is just kind of an off shade white. And all you want to do is start applying um, squiggly lines across the armor. 
don't go overboard. The first two or three times I attempted this, the lightning bolts ended looking like a tree. So what I'm gonna do is follow one squiggly line down across the entire front of the miniature, starting from the top left shoulder, working my way down his chest, across the belt buckle, and then continuing down his shin armor. You don't have to be particularly neat. You don't have to have a particular plan in mind. Just follow that line down, making sure that it's nice and visible, but that it's not in any way, shape or form symmetrical or straight. As you can see the squiggly line I've done. And then from that one big squiggly line, you can just add a few tiny offshoots. The mistake I make, keep making is trying to do multiple offshoots, like loads of them. You don't need it. One or two is more than enough to trick the eye into thinking that the miniature has lightning all over it. So obviously I'm going very thin with the Ulthuan Grey, which means I'm gonna to to give it a couple of passes to try and get that solid whitish color across the armor. And the reason you want a solid-ish color is for the next stage. So I'm gonna show you now where I've placed lightning all over this miniature to give you an idea of how much lightning I believe should be across um, a single Night Lord's model. So here you go, across both shin plates, that one big bit around are down the center and his shoulder pad got a bit now. So now we're gonna use Talazar Blue, and we're gonna put a thin coat of this over all of the lightning. We're not trying to keep inside the line of the white. We want it to overspill a little bit. It will make it seem as though the lightning is glowing and hitting the rest of the armor, which will really sell the effect of it being lightning. You can already see that bit across his chest. It doesn't stand out so much, not so stark against his blue armor, but you can definitely see some sort of like power flowing through it. When I was on the Oath One Grey stage, I also took the opportunity to paint inside his eye lenses Oath One Grey and the power coils of his plasma pistol Oath One Grey, knowing that I'm going to come in with this Talazar Blue and paint those the same color, almost as if the same energy that's powering his weapon and his suit's internal system is what's leaking that lightning power and it's rippling across his armor. So I'm going to take my time and put a little bit of that blue inside his eye sockets. Sorry for the camera focusing on my hand here. But as you can see, it makes the uh, eyes look really good, really fast. Obviously these plasma coils are the same thing. Just gonna go in with a little bit more uh, Talazar blue than you think. And just put a nice thick coat over those coils. It will dry beautifully, as if you've done absolutely loads of work when you in fact have not. Also the big gnarly power axe that he has. I put some of that old one gray in the eye sockets and the mouth. And here's what the lightning I did looks like across his armor. Very quick, very easy. Now we're gonna go back to the Ulthuan Grey and we're going to go over the lightning one more time. Extremely thin and we're not going from start to finish. Just where the lightning turns a little bit. So when it hits like a squiggly point and it kind of juts out a little bit, anywhere where there's a little angle, just um, highlight that angle with a bit of the Ulthuan Grey. This will then make the lightning pop and make it look fantastic. This was the bit that was actually stopping me the last time from with my Night Lords. I was kind of happy with the blue armor, but I didn't manage to get the lightning correct, which threw the whole pro project out. Um, super un uh, unhappy with that, being so inspired by the Aaron Dembski Bowden books, um, the Night Lords omnibus. So now I'm finally gonna have a full Night Lords army and I'm super excited to get them on a table. And with that, this is my completed Night Lord. I am super, super happy with the end result. I was a little bit nervous and apprehensive about painting this miniature. And here is the 360 grand reveal. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, throw the video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys very much and I will see you guys in the next video.